Hey guys, today in Sword Art Online in the Crowd Factor, we're going to talk about how to tank in this game. And when I first heard Lee Tan talk about tanking in Sword Art Online in the Crowd Factor, uh, I, I was skeptical. I don't think that tanking is possible in this game because of the way that the AoE attack on the enemy is done, that it's just going to attack everyone in the area. But I was proven wrong by uh, Elite Hen in my Sword Art Online Integral Factor gameplay, uh, which is going to make an appearance later on in the video. And and she told me about uh, how the tanking is done in Sword Art Online Integral Factor. And it blew my mind. So I'm a believer now. So today we are going to look into stuff that's required to tank in Sword Art Online in the Graal Factor in uh, more details. We'll see how useful it is and if it is as game changing as how it is described in the main story event. So I'll let you guys decide and if you uh, can let me know in the comments below that would be great so you can discuss about it. But before we begin, please uh, like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more Sword Art Online Integral Factor contents. So, uh, the only weapon that's capable of uh, doing the tanking effectively is Club. And that's due to this weapon proficiency skills that's called Club's Blow. And if you read the description here, it says that it will reduce the damage caused to the player and the party members. Uh, by 2%, so you heard me right. Uh, to, it reduces the damage from the player and the party members. So 2% seems to be very low, that, that's because I haven't leveled up the skills. So I'm just going to level this one up and use up my uh, release crystal S for you guys so that we know uh, how much it is at uh, maximum level. So we're just gonna do it for the sake of science. And uh, as you can see, at the level 10, which is the maximum level, it reduces by 20% for 4 seconds, which is quite significant. And to show you, uh, to show it to you guys how it, how significant it is, under damage reduction, so we're going to test it on Alos, and we're going to uh, test the damage on this firewall, uh, which is the strongest attack from Alice, and as you can see earlier, it does around 7,000 damage to me. And, uh, it's, and even that uh, skill here, it's only doing 4,000 damage. So we're going to try to dive in one more time, see the damage again. And 6,600, 6,900, and 7,000. Okay, so uh, it's doing around 6,000 to 7,000 damage. Uh, so I'm going to try to use the switch in here and when the switch is used as you can see there's a effect in there and that's the one that reduces the damage and I'm going to slow-mo here so that you can see the damage reductions and as you can see it's doing 4,700, 5,300 and once the buff is off it's going back to 6,000 damage and the last one is almost 9,000 there too. So. Uh, it drops from 6,000 to 7,000 to uh, around 5,000 damage. So it's quite significant uh, drops on the damage. And remember that this effect is applied to a party, not just your players. And just for fun, I'm going to show you this neat trick with Dauntless Kane's 2 star shield skills that will also reduce the damage uh, from the enemy. So I'm going to use this skill on switch and see how much damage does it reduce. This skill will stack with the club's blow weapon proficiency as you can see there now we have two barriers. And the damage is down to 2900 and actually it's like around 2500-ish. Which is quite significant. This method is not very practical because you wouldn't want to use offensive skill on your switch but just for fun. And the second skill, uh, the for weapon proficiency skill that you're going to see is this weapon break. So this weapon break is saying that it will lower the enemy's attack by 27% for 
10 seconds on rare occasions. So what it means on the rare occasion there is that like for every hit that you inflict on the enemy, it has a chance to lower the enemy attack by this 27%. And this 27% is actually on level 1. And on maximum level, it will reduce the enemy's attack by 45%. And because the enemy attack is lowered, it will inflict less damage to everyone that is in the party that's, that's fighting that monsters. So, uh, I don't have this skill at maximum level, so my friend Crystal here is going to show us how this skill works. So we're going to fight the level 70 White Witch. So without a weapon break, her broom attack is doing around 1200 to 1300 damage on me. So we're going to try to inflict the weapon break on her and see how much damage this her attack, her, that same attack, does on me again. When we successfully land a weapon break on the enemy, you'll see this icon here on the boss monster, which indicates that his her attack is being lowered. And as you can see on my friend, the attack is only doing one damage when that skill is being used, and on me. Uh, this skill is doing 1300 damage, but that's supposed to be one of the strongest attack that, uh, or stronger attack that she can use. And the other one is only doing 700, and as you can see, the 1200 now is dropped to only 100 or 200 damage on me. So that was the same attack that we showed earlier on uh, the beginning of the fight. There's also some skill that can lower the enemy attack as uh, for example this full offense Lisbeth skill it has an ability to reduce the enemy blunt attack by 18.4 for 15 seconds and conveniently the white witch attack type is also a blunt attack type so you can see that attack type uh, from there so if we have both skill in effect as you can see in this clip now the damage that this witch does on me is only one damage, so it drops from 1,000 or 300-ish to just one damage. And now every subsequent attack is also doing one damage on me, which is huge. And of course when the defense down or the weapon break is gone again, and now it's doing around 2,000 damage with that skill. Let's take a look again now that the enemy has two attack debuff on her and this attack now is only doing 340 which it was doing 2000 damage before and now it drops to 340. So what about the floor 20 boss when he was using the defense break on the player which will reduce the defense to zero as you can see from my previous video. Would this skill be any useful in that situation? And the answer would be yes, because it's still going to reduce the damage applied from the monster uh, based on the percentage. So this is going to be especially useful against this boss actually. So now let's talk about the fact that the weapon break only happens on rare occasions, which is not going to be very reliable for tanking. That statement is true, uh, but you can increase your chances of inflicting the, the, the uh, weapon break on the enemy if you hit your enemy more often. And the best way to do that is to use the normal attack, since the attack animation is very quick, so you can dish out attack after attack. So I'm going to lower the enemy's HP to below 50% so that uh, he will use the defense break on me. And when the boss has both attack debuff, we'll see how much damage it does on us. So 3799 on this technique that usually does around 10,000 damage on me under the defense debuff. So that's very significant drop. Which can save us players a lot of potions in the long run. So now if you're wondering uh, about who Crystal is, there was an episode on how I met Crystals on Lightning Tatsu channel. Uh, I have a short clip on it, but you can see the full video on his channel. Lightning Tatsu is also making a Sword Art Online Integral Factor video. 
you check it out and might, you might have something that you like in there. So to summarize what we've seen so far, to tank in Sora Online in the Growth Factor, you need to use clubs as your main weapon. There are two weapon proficiency skills that can make you a tank for your party. The first one being a club's blow, which will reduce the damage to by 20%. And the second one is the weapon break that will reduce the enemy's attack by up to 45%. Club's blow reduces last damage, but you can control on when you want to use it because it applies on switch. While weapon break uh, reduces more damage, but you don't have control over when you can use the skill because it happens at random. So, what do you guys think about tanking and sword art on the craft factory? Is it something that you guys are going to try? For me, it makes me wish that there was a really strong boss that will make the tanking integral on finishing the quest or something like that. So let me know in the comment below what you think about it. And uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel again. And I'll see you in the next Sword Art Online in the Growl Factor video. Bye now.